Hello everyone and welcome back to a new episode. In this episode, we are going to continue with our water tank series, but this time we added a temperature sensor in addition to the water level sensor. In this video, we're going to talk about shopping list, hardware, wiring, drilling, digital twin, and the whole thing. So please watch carefully and let me know in the comments if you have any questions. And don't forget to subscribe to the channel for more content. So let's get to it. My system uses two tanks working together. An underground tank that gets filled by the utility provider and a roof tank that's filled automatically using the pump. With this setup, I can monitor daily water consumption from the roof tank in real time down to the minute and even track temperature trends to guide an automated water cooling system. As you can see, the underground tank dips here a little bit, which means that the roof tank is getting filled up. And then this is the daily water consumption, as you can see. And then again, the pump kicks in, takes water from the underground tank and fills the roof tank. See, they are working beautifully in tandem and we have all the visibility that we need in order to monitor the water flow, as well as having temperature trends and history trends, as you can see, the water is pretty hot here. So this is where we get the visibility needed in order to see whether our cooling system that we are yet to purchase is going to be effective. All right, so let's get started and talk about what items do we need to purchase to get this project up and running. So all of these will cost you around 75 USD or a little bit less or a little bit more. All the items are in the video description, purchase links, and there's no affiliate links from my case. So feel free to get them from wherever you want. So the first one we're going to talk about is our Shelly Plus Uni. I'm really, really happy with this product. It works well, it's reliable, it's easy to use. This is the Plus version. Then we want to get an enclosure box. This one is transparent. It does not have any knockouts. And this dimension is a uh, minimum to fit our uh, stuff. Then we get these silicon based wires, uh, blue and red for indication of positive and negative. We have a wire stripper for ease of use, just a tool. And we have our wire connectors uh, kit. I got this 30-piece uh, kit, two, three, four, and five-way connectors as well. And we have the power supply DIN rail mountable from AC to DC. Uh, in my case, I do have a DIN rail, so I will mount this nicely. But you can also use a wall power supply, achieves the same result from AC to DC. And this is a uh, plug jack connector for uh, just our lab testing. And this is our temperature sensor. It comes with uh, five cable in this product and uh, it has three wires. And this is powered by the Shelly. And last but not least, we have our level sensor. And in this case, I have a one meter high tank so i need only a one meter range it comes with three wires as well as shown uh, please make sure you get the three wire version with the zero to ten volt output now let's take a quick look at the shelly plus uni connection diagram we are going to be discussing each and every connection so uh, just take this as a high level we will have our AC mains connected to our power supply input. Then we'll get a 24 volt DC as an output, which we will connect to the Shelly and the level sensor and a common ground. We will also connect our temperature sensor to the Shelly. We will power it by the Shelly and we will use the common ground again. And now let's move on and discuss each connection. For our first connection, let's get a three-way connector. We'll connect the positive pole from the DC adapter. We'll connect the position one from the Shelly 
the VAC1 red cable and we will connect the red cable from the level sensor. For our second connection, we will need a five-way connector. We will connect the negative pole from the power supply. We'll connect the position to from the Shelly, the VAC to the black cable. We will connect also position seven, green ground cable. We will connect the blue cable from the level sensor. And finally, we'll connect the black cable from the temperature sensor. So this is our common ground connection number two. For connection number three, this is very important we are going to use a two-way connector we will connect position four from the shelly the sensor vcc to power the temperature sensor and we will connect the red vcc from the temperature sensor into the two-way connector please remember we will not power the temperature sensor using our power supply as this will damage your sensor right so connection four still on the temperature sensor We'll get another two-way connector. We'll get the position five blue data cable from the Shelly and the yellow data cable from the temperature sensor. So for our final connection, connection number five, we'll get the position three analog in from the Shelly and we'll connect it to the white sensor cable again in a two-way connector. Great, so now that you have finished your connections, let's head to the lab and do our first test. We will power it up with our DC adapter power supply just in the lab. And as you can see, the Shelly is on, but the light uh, bulb will not show in this lighting condition, but it's on and it's all good. Now that the Shelly is powered on, let's go ahead and configure it. And the easiest approach for this is to get your mobile phone, search for it via Bluetooth, connect it to your Wi-Fi, and then just add it to Wi-Fi. And next, you might want to check the firmwares. You might want to also update it more than once and get it up to the latest firmware. So now we will proceed with going to our web interface, entering the Shelly IP, going to peripherals and we will add the temperature sensor it is auto discovered already so that's great then we'll add and reboot then it's going to take a few seconds to uh, reboot the sensor and we can see the temperature sensor is on now we will repeat the same thing but we will add the voltmeter peripheral for the level sensor Again, we will add it and reboot the sensor. And that's great. So now we have the two sensors up and running, connected to the Shelly. Now let's go back to Home Assistant and go to Devices. It is auto-discovered by the Shelly native integration Home Assistant. So very straightforward, very easy. Just add it to your areas and uh, you should be good. And now let's check the newly added Shelly devices. So we go to Shelly integration. You see the underground tank and the roof tank. The roof tank, as you can see, has the temperature sensor reading and the voltmeter sensor reading. So it's looking really good. So far, so good. So now we'll bring this uh, empty tank will put the two sensors inside it the temperature and the level and we'll start pouring water and as you can see the temperature sensor is increasing from 25 will start to gradually increase to 26 voltmeter is also increasing a little bit from 0.11 to 0.23 so both uh, sensors are working fine and also we have this uh, extra voltmeter to make sure that the temperature reading is matching and it is slowly increasing to 31.6 32 
so it is somewhat accurate it's good enough i would say and my voltmeter is reading 35 and uh, yeah so that's that's about it for the lab test we are happy and uh, we are now ready to move to the real world uh, deployment Awesome. So now for the real deal, we will head to the roof and check what we have. So it is scorching hot now. Uh, so we'll have to do it in the evening. So this is our control panel or con electrical box. We have our mains here. We're going to tap into that. We have a empty spot in DIN rail and we have a free conduit, luckily, to pass our cables. We also have here an existing float sensor. This is just a dumb float sensor device for the level of water. Right, so now that we've finished with our tank preparation, drilling, and cable passing, let's proceed with the power. Please do not attempt this on yourself unless you know what you're doing or seek professional uh, electrician to do this job. So here I'm gonna test with my voltmeter the mains. I'm getting 240 AC, which is good. And then I'm gonna isolate the power using the switch to make sure we're going to work without having any power. So for the final assembly, we're going to bring our enclosure box, pass the cables through the knockouts in the final destination, final location, and then we are going to uh, power it up. So here you can see it is snugged in nicely. Everything is passed in neatly. And uh, our circuit breaker uh, or so the DC power supply is uh, mounted on the DIN rail. We're going to now to start the power. And as you can see, it is green. It's working fine. 
and so far so good so uh, that's about the installation part is completed successfully and looking good thank you so much for watching i really hope you enjoyed this video as much as i did and please make sure to subscribe like and drop me a comment and i will be happy to see you in the next episode